Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Anceloni. Welcome, dear listener, to Kardec Radio. We are here live again and again at the Kardec Radio at the Chantilly Studios in Virginia, United States of America. And you, dear listener, wherever you are in the world, we are very happy to listen from you. You know, we have been receiving lots of emails, requests even requests for spiritual treatment, and we are doing our best to reply to your emails and to forward instructions where you can find the the help you're looking for. You can count on Kardec Radio because we are connected to the whole Spiritist movement around the world, and we have wonderful people throughout the many Spiritist centers in this world who can help you for sure because we are a movement of fraternity. By the way, this is exactly what we're talking about today. We are going to talk about when things go wrong in the movement. Why is that possibly happening if that happens? We call it obsession in the spiritist movement. Is it really possible? How so? If we are a movement of fraternity, solidarity, and uh, How can this actually happen? These questions and many others will be answered here today. And we have extra help. Susanna Simons is here with us. She is the president of Conscious Living Spiritist Center in Miami, Florida, together with our dear friend Marcelo Neto from Edisei of America. And she's also the president of the Spiritist Federation of Florida, a whole lot of work she can tell us about it and professionally she's a doctor of physical therapy she teaches neurology as she is assistant professor at nova southern southeastern university in miami florida she has a whole lot to share with us and uh, to make us understand about the spiritist movement how the spiritist movement can get in trouble if we don't watch out how do we get into obsession in a collective way it's a very very delicate issue very sensitive but you know it's possible to prevent it's possible to remedy it and that's why we are programming this very program today for you and you can ask your questions live either by calling us through the toll-free number 858-769-4705, or you can email to us at cardecradio.gmail.com or go to the chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash cardecradio, and right there we can listen to your very comments and or questions. And you're very welcome to talk directly to Dr. Simoins right here at Cardec Radio. Kardec himself asked this question to the Spirit in the Spirit's book. How can Spiritism help the world progress? And the answer, besides many other things, is by destroying materialism. How can that answer actually be guidance for us to prevent and probably remedy obsession in the Spiritist movement? These and many other discussions will be here today with you. And if you're listening to this on demand through iTunes, TuneIn Radio, or at cardiacradio.com or blogtalkradio.com, remember, you can still send your questions, send your comments, send your suggestions, and we're going to relay them to Susanna Simões if you need her to address anything, or we'll address them directly. Let us not forget that tomorrow we have Spiritist Awareness, a program in which several hosts throughout the world are guiding us through the message of Spiritism. By the way, hey, Jay, how are you? I hope you're fine. We have missed you. We have just come back from a long trip to Brazil, and we are finally back here in the United States ready to listen from you. Right now, we're going to set the tone of the program today by listening to the very message of Emmanuel 
through the hands of Chico Xavier. You can buy the CD and the book, Enlightening Messages, where you're going to find this message and many more. Just go to the website of the Spiritist Society of Baltimore, www.ssbaltimore.org, and you'll be able to listen to it right here and now, the tone of the program today. Prayer of Service Lord, teach us to walk the enlightening path of service. Give us the strength to destroy the heavy fortress of our wrongdoings. The courage to pave the way to freedom from ourselves and the means to unlock our hearts in favor of our neighbors. Surrendering to them at last the treasures of love with which you entrusted us. Wherever we walk, may pain become less hurtful, ignorance less aggressive, hatred less cruel, darkness less dense, lethargy less shadowing, intolerance less destructive. If we do not yet possess the positive qualities to enrich our terrestrial journey, help us to mitigate the injustices that surround us. May we, in your name, distribute fraternity and renewal and use with happiness the sublime and invisible gifts of silence, comprehension, and renunciation. Lord, who taught us without words the supreme lessons of simplicity in the cradle and of sacrifice in the cross, leading us toward spiritual development and divine resurrection, guide our uncertain walk and help our sanctified propositions so that your will, merciful and just, be unto us, with us, and for us, today and forever, wherever we may be. So be it. We will return to our program after these messages. Books of Andre Louise. Through the hands of the most prolific medium of all times, Chico Javier, the spirit doctor André Louise wrote a series of books that unveil the mechanisms of life and life after life. From the best-selling novel, No So Lar, Our Home, to And Life Goes On, the reader will find illumination for a fulfilled life on earth as well as immortal happiness. Check the many titles available at the international distributor, EDI. CEI of America. Their website is www.edicceiofamerica.com. Spread the word, Kardec Radio, to learn more about Spiritism. Spiritist Network, your gateway to on demand Spiritist videos. www. SpiritistNetwork.com Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Traveling to another country? Immigrating elsewhere? Prepare yourself by reading the book Among Brothers of Other Lands in which several loving and wise spirits wrote through the hands of Chico Xavier and Waldo Vieira, telling all of us the tips and hints of a successful transition to a new land. Buy your copy today at www.edicceiofamerica.com. Do you want spiritist books for your children? At Edisa of America, you'll find a collection of them from the best-selling book, Our Father, in which the spirit May May, through Chico Xavier, brought countless poems, stories, and folk tales based on the Lord's Prayer. 
to the beautiful and educational collection by the author Eda Yusson Salis on Back to School and many others. Buy your copy today at www.adasayofamerica.com. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are here with Dr. Susanna Simões from the Conscious Living Spirit Center in Miami, Florida. She's also the president of the Spirit Federation of Florida. Professionally, she's a doctor of physical therapy, teaching neurology as an assistant professor at Nova Southeastern University in Miami. Thank you so much, Susanna, for being with us today. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's wonderful to have you here, Susanna. First question, Susanna, how have you become a spiritist? Well, um, I guess I was born a spiritist. Um, Mm -hmm. In Brazil, my um, grandmother became a spiritist early on in her life when uh, she went through some difficult times and was given the spiritist book for the first time. Um, So she was a spiritist. She is the founder of a center in Rio. And uh, this was followed by my mom, who eventually ended up also uh, founding another center in Rio. So I was kind of raised in a spiritist family. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, naturally, when I came to the United States, I um, looked to join a center, which I did. And um, eventually, um, the center uh, ended, and which gave us an opportunity to uh, found with our friend Marcelo the Conscious Living here in Miami. So it's been part of my entire life. That's wonderful. But Susanna, it hasn't been an easy journey from becoming a spiritist to being active and uh, working for spiritism to the point of embracing uh, the presidency of the Spiritist Federation of Florida. It's a long journey. How has it been and how is it the work of the Spiritist Federation of Florida today? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, you know, I have always uh, been somewhat active um, as a, even in the youth movement, participated <clears throat> in Brazil in several um, meetings. And so I kind of grew up in this mindset of service, um, visiting the slums in Rio with my grandmother um, as a little girl. But it is quite different when you actually move from being a worker and um, and uh, participating to actually taking some responsibilities um, and um, in, in in the leadership in in some ways. Um, it's quite often um, you know easier to be the worker who is looking at what is happening in the movement or in the spiritual center and uh, pointing out to the things that need to be done or could be done in a better way. So then when you flip side, and now you are the one basically with the responsibility of facilitating the movement, things become a lot more serious, challenging, and difficult. But I always look at it as a, as an incredible opportunity for me to grow because I feel deeply that it is um, – for my own benefit in terms of mm-hmm. uh, spiritual enlightenment. So with yeah. that, uh, with that, you know, um, sense, we took the, um, um, we were elected to be the president nowadays of the um, federation, which um, mm-hmm. this term just actually started uh, in January of this year. So it's fairly uh, recent. And uh, we are, pretty much moving forward with um, the work that's been done by um, Marcelo Neto previously and all the other uh, presidents and board of directors in um, strengthening the movement within uh, the state of Florida. Um, Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, the federation, you know, in my mind has these two uh, primary goals. One is of course, disseminate the message of spiritism, but as a federation, we have the role of strengthening the centers, um, facilitating the communication between the centers, communication um, in the movement, and also creating ways of um, 
strengthening the centers, uh, creating what I call nowadays an enablement movement where we are developing courses and opportunities for the centers to uh, strengthen their workforce so that people uh -huh. can become more skilled in what they do. So that's pretty much the work of the Federation and the things that we are focusing at this point. That's wonderful. By the way, how many centers are in Florida nowadays? We have now <clears throat> about 15 centers who are directly uh, involved with the Federation. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's a lot. And plus, Florida is like a very long state, so it's a lot to... It, 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 the Federation is much needed, for sure, to, to provide not only the unity, but as you said, the opportunity to strengthen the, the, the centers and the movement. And as far as we hear, it's doing quite well. I remember the the conference we had in March, organized uh -huh. by the Federation. You know, the, for me, Susana, the, the most important feeling that we got was the feeling of fraternity and simplicity at the same time. It was well organized, but it kept the much needed simplicity. It wasn't like a show. I see many people that are doing that are organizing events mostly to show off things instead of really making people feel together and united and 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 that was exactly what I felt there that people were united, they were happy to serve, they were happy to be there, and the message was very, very clear from the Spiritist Federation to everybody and uh we commend the Federation for it. It was beautiful. But Susan, Thank you. and I want to say this, you know, you you were celebrating the gospel at that uh -huh. movement, at that moment as well, right? Right, at the conference. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, the 150 years of the publishing of the gospel according to Spiritism. As you know, Kardec Radio is running this year-long campaign about the book, and we are asking listeners to share their favorite passages. What is your favorite passage of the gospel? Huh. That's <laughs> actually a difficult question because um, the gospel is really full of pearls, right? And yeah. um, I, I honestly, I don't have a favorite one, but I have a number of passages that I um, frequently cite in my lectures uh, on the studies, and um, there's one that comes to my mind right now that I, I think it comes to my mind because it speaks to a little bit to the topic of today. And uh -huh. it's also a passage from the gospel that I don't hear much in uh -huh. lectures, and I don't hear people citing it, and I find it to be one of these pearls in the gospel that perhaps, um, you know, we could be paying more attention to it. It's a passage that is in chapter 10, uh, Blessed are the merciful. And uh -huh. it's an answer by the Spirit, St. Louis, to a question by Kardec when Kardec asked if it would be reprehensible to observe people's imperfections if this observation does not result in any benefit for the person, and if it would be reprehensible to talk about people's imperfections. And mm. the, the answer by the Spirit uh, St. Louis is that, of course, everything depends on the person's um, intent, and that we are not forbidden to see what is wrong or the mistakes and the errors that people are committing. In fact, if we don't have these... Um, the sense of, uh, of uh, assessment and criticism, progress cannot be made. But what's really important in this question, in, in the answer more specifically, that I think um, we should pay attention to, is that um, St. Louis says that it's an error to make the observation to the detriment of someone else unnecessarily discrediting that person um, in the public eyes. And so I think that, you know, this has always caught my attention because mm -hmm. we, in our stage of evolution, human beings, we have this incredible tendency and pull to 
talk about people's shortcomings to one another. And from these small talk that sometimes turn into gossip, um, really, uh, the person who is uh, committing the mistake or whatever is not benefiting from it. We are not benefiting from it ourselves. So it is a mechanism that we uh, use, psychologically speaking. Every time we diminish someone automatically, the message that we are delivering is, I am not like that person. And automatically, as we make one smaller, we make ourselves bigger. So whether this is a conscious or unconscious process or not, it is part of our daily lives and it's part of human movement. I'm not going to say it's part of the spiritual movement. It's part of the human movement. Mm-hmm. And and St. Louis gives you know some specific guidelines in this term because down on this passage, he's going to say that you know um, that we should limit ourselves. If nothing good is going to come out of it. We should Mm -hmm. limit ourselves to observing what's happening and to study, to make sure that we cannot censor in ourselves the same thing that we are censoring in others. Mm -hmm. And quite often, what we easily observe in others is a very strong tendency that we carry in our own selves and our own personalities. So Mm -hmm. I just think that this is uh, one of these pros in the gospel that it's not discussed too much, I don't hear too much in lectures, but it's something that has been in my mind lately as I have done some work around the topic of um, obsession, and I think eventually we'll get to this, um, how to prevent it from uh, happening, but um, Mm -hmm. this will be one of the directions, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. perhaps we should talk a little less because it does drain the best energies and it, it, it is in the chapter, Blessed the Merciful, so it goes against the law of love in the expression of mercifulness. So exactly. I really like this passage. Mm-hmm. That That's a wonderful reminder, the message. And Susanna, just on a short note, uh, we were at the celebration of 25 years of the psychological series of Joana de Angelis uh, through Divaldo Franco in Salvador Bahia, and, uh-huh. and the wonderful psychologists who studied the the books were there, and people were mentioning the fact that through a, an inner mechanism of projection, we actually tend to, you know, observing other things that we may not like, that we dislike, and people barely know that what they are observing is something that probably they have inside. So the the mechanism of projection would probably explain. But this is just a short note. I know we're going to discuss much yeah. more as we uh-huh. go through the understanding of this. But before we get into this and go to our first break, what because, as you said, it's not a spiritist movement that has a problem. It's a human, the human nature within it. So there is a difference, Susanna, between the teachings of spiritism and what we create as a movement. Can you tell us the difference, please, before we get into the discussion about possible obsession in it? Yes. Um, the the spiritist doctrine is a set of um, of concepts. It's a philosophy that was um, brought to us by the spirits under the uh, organization of Alain Kardec. So these set of principles of ideas constitute what we call the spiritist doctrine. Now, there is something called the spiritist movement, which has nothing to do in certain ways to the spiritist doctrine per se. The goal is that eventually the spiritist movement and the spiritist doctrine will be fully aligned. That's the goal, right? So when we are talking about the spiritist movement, we are talking about the people who are making the movement. We are talking about a society in itself, a group of individuals, of human beings with spiritual needs that come together in what I call a, um, a laboratory because um, we know that we cannot evolve 
without being a society. Society, the law of society is one of the moral laws that we find in the Spirit's book. So God provided us with faculties so that we can socialize, intelligence, ability to communicate, so that each one of us becomes an instrument to the progress of the other. So the spiritist movement is just like that. It is a society made of spirits who are in a process of evolution, seeking to gain awareness, seek to, seeking enlightenment. So it's made of imperfect beings. And um, a lot of people who come to the movement and who fall in love with the spiritist doctrine um, often happens that people will get very um, disappointed and they make a confusion. They cannot separate between the spiritist doctrine and the spiritist movement. So they end up saying, I'm leaving disappointed with the spiritist doctrine. But truly what they get disappointed is with the spiritist um, movement. I was at the center um, another day and uh, with the English group, the study group that we have, uh, it was actually just before I did my workshop um, in the beginning of the year in Chicago about the obsession of this movement. So I was sharing with the group that we would be talking about this topic. And one of our friends who is American, she said to me, but is there such a thing in the spiritist movement? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, really like shocked, you know what I mean? And uh -huh. I said, yes, yes, the spiritist movement is made by people. And so, you know, I don't want to paint a very dark picture here because there is so many wonderful and good things and learning and progress in the uh -huh. spiritist movement. But of course, like any other human movement, there uh -huh. are problems, there are difficulties, there are challenges. And the invitation is, if you want to get a post-graduation course in relating, join the spiritist movement. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's the difference. That's great. This is it. We're going to give a short break when we come back. We want to know more about the ins and outs of obsession in the Spiritist Movement, okay? All right. We will return to our program after these messages. Getting to the Light Spiritist Therapy for Discarnate Spirits is a small book that offers guidance to Spiritist practitioners and Spiritist counselors. Purchase your copy at www.ssbaltimore.org. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. If you missed out on your previous shows, no worries. We have an on-demand section of all previous shows and interviews. Go to our website at www.kardecradio.com. Spread the word, Kardec Radio, to learn more about Spiritism. Help prevent suicide by reading and sharing these books with others. Two great books are available to help in this Kardec Radio campaign to prevent suicide. Suicide, All You Need to Know, by the international Spiritist speaker, Richard Simonetti. You can buy your copy at www.roundtablepublishing-uk.com. Also, Memoirs of a Suicide by the medium Yvonne Pereira. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.com. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Kardec Radio now offers more programs during the week and weekends. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can follow the beautiful program God at Home with Francisca Kranz and the British Spiritist Community. They will brighten your days by doing a God at Home meeting wherever you are in the world while teaching you how to do the same in your own home with your family and friends. Every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 
you will hear incredibly inspirational Spiritist Talks directly broadcasted by Spiritist Network. There will be true educational moments to carry out to immortality. Every Saturday, live interviews, bridging health and spiritism with the host Dr. Vanessa Anceloni. You may ask questions to the interviewed guests by calling 858-769-4705. And every Sunday, tune in to Spiritist Awareness at Cardiac Radio. You will hear a series of segments on a diversity of Spiritist topics. Cardiac will broadcast the Spiritist Moment with Kirsten DeMello, the reading of the Spiritist book by John DeRosa and Steve Shepard, Spiritist in Your Life with Drs. Marco and Joyce Magalhães, Spiritist and the Gospel with Luis Sergio Marotta, Spiritist Education for Youth and Children with Bernadette Leal, Spiritist Music with James Marotta, Neuroscience and Spiritism with Dr. Vanessa Anceloni, and many more segments coming soon. Enjoy it all and nurse your soul with Kardec Radio. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are here back to talk about obsession in the Spiritist Movement. And we have a special guest, Dr. Susana Simões, who is the president of the Conscious Living Spiritist Center in South Miami, Florida, United States, and the president of the Spiritist Federation of Florida, which encompasses 15 Spiritist Centers throughout the state of Florida. She is also a doctor of physical therapy, teaching neurology as an assistant professor of Nova Southeastern University in Miami, Florida. Susana, before the break, we were talking about the fact that, you know, there are things that may happen as human beings and may, you know, threaten the harmony of the Spiritist movement. We call it obsession in the Spiritist movement. As you said before, several people also asked this question to us. How is it possible that a movement that teaches about love and charity can actually get in trouble with obsession? What is it? (laughs) Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, We, we, yeah, the, the, the spiritist philosophy teaches us about love and charity, and that is the goal. Now, we are in the journey, right? So um, there is a huge difference and a huge gap in between what we know and what we are able to manifest. So that's the first thing that people need to understand. Um, Some of us uh, know the Spirit's Book very well, can cite many questions of the Spirit's Book, can cite many passages of the Gospel, and do brilliant lectures. And yet, our daily lives do not reflect necessarily um, our, our knowledge. And the reason why is um, what we invited to do, the journey, is to bring the knowledge from the brain down to the heart, And for that to happen, you need to be able to exercise the virtues. We have them um, latent in our souls, um, is our inheritance from God. And the whole purpose of life is to be able to develop them, to manifest them fully. And we will be able to do so by exercising them as we're given opportunities in our relationships to practice them. So the reason why those things happen is that the fact that we know what we know, unfortunately for us, don't turn us into angels or pure spirits. Mm -hmm. If that was the case, then probably we would be living in better planets, Vanessa. We wouldn't Mm -hmm. be here. (laughs) The reason why we are here, the reason why we're here is precisely because we need the exercises, you know, it's not, you don't learn about loving by taking a post-graduation course in love in any university. You mm-hmm. learn by love by living with one another and being invited to practice and to exercise love. So this is why, I mean, it's not about the theory, it's about the ability to integrate and to manifest the principles into our daily lives. Mm. So in in the... 
The medium's book, chapter 23, dedicated to obsession, Kardec mentions about the definition of obsession, saying that it's a, a persistent negative uh, thought that we have towards somebody else, incarnate or discarnate. How can we actually apply this into the collectivity, meaning the spiritist movement, characterizing obsession there? Right, so it's the same process, right? So once we understand how it takes place with us um, individually, so I think one of uh, the most important things for uh, people and the listeners to understand is that um, the connection is established because the spirits are going to identify in us our areas of vulnerability or mental gaps. And they, a lot of times, as we read in Andre Lewis, uh, we learn that they actually know very well our personalities and our tendencies and the areas where, you know, we still have some darkness within ourselves. And what they will do is they will nurture those feelings and those areas they are in vibrating with us in the same uh, frequency wavelength and so they are able to uh, communicate with us and they nurture whatever is negative in us it's going to be nurtured it's going to be uh, enhanced you can take this principle to a bigger group so groups also have their personalities, their tendencies, their darkness, their areas of vulnerability. You can think of it individually or as a group. So if you look at the spiritual centers across the state, the country, or the the world, if you want, you see that each one of them has actually a, a, a personality, if you will. And so in that, uh, each group is going to have their strengths and their weaknesses, and so the spirits take advantage of the weaknesses of uh, the group to nurture that. And that's how the obsession can take place in a more like collective and broader way. In fact, Kardec in the Spiritist magazine, I think it's 1860, he um, is speaking about the... Um, the challenges of the spiritual society at the time, he mentions that the um, the biggest uh, rivals of the society were not the ones that were outside. At the time, there was a lot of uh, persecution and, um, you know, animosity against the movement, the new ideas that were just um, starting. But the biggest um, rivals were the discarded spirits that could infiltrate themselves into the movement, um, whether, you know, the members of the society like it or not. And precisely mm-hmm. through this mechanism, the mechanism of finding out what the, the vulnerabilities of the group are or what are the, or who are the vulnerable pieces and nurturing those vulnerabilities. And so that's how pretty much it takes place. Mm-hmm. And, and and Susanna, when we talk about uh, obsession, we're talking about behavior that goes from thoughts to feelings, words. And Leon Denis, in a book that is not translated yet, unfortunately, mm-hmm. named No Invisível, talks yes. about the fact that our thoughts may attract bad spirits to the spiritist meetings. So... Is this one of the things that would probably characterize and also um, trigger um, an obsession? How can we actually understand the mechanisms of obsession in a practical way so people can uh, pay attention to the subtle details of how it's forming before it actually takes place? Yes, I think there is, um, this is going to take us to, like you said, a practical and like a next level here. So we we know that the spiritual centers are usually uh, protected. We have the spiritual centers have their protections, have the spirits who are in charge of 
protecting the environment. But the spirits will never um, act directly on our free will. They can assist you, but they're not going to impose on us. So if we are mentally connected with um, spirits who are um, inferior, let's put it this way, or momentarily in a lost, and their intent is to bring disharmony to our lives or to the movement, it's not the fact that we're going to walk into the spiritual center that we are going to become disconnected from them necessarily. They might even not be able to get into the spiritual environment of the center, but still we are going to, we, we can continue to be connected with them if we are nurturing that connection. Now, I think your question also leads us to um, talk about how are we going to to know that this is happening. And I think the, the best way is to be mindful of what is happening with us in terms of our behavior. So there is a number of uh, feelings that we can observe that um, they, they themselves do not, don't necessarily indicate that we are upset. That needs to be clear. But if nurtured, if they are constant, let's say you um, dislike someone in the spiritual center for whatever reason, okay? Mm -hmm. At that point, you have two options. You can say to yourself, okay, I'm acknowledging that I don't love this person necessarily, but I'm going to choose to do an exercise, and I'm going to focus on what good things this person has, and I'm going to... Um, exercise love towards that person. It's an exercise. You're not going to go from not liking someone to loving the person miraculously from one day to another. But it is important that you choose to move in that direction. Or you can open space in your mind and now nurture these negative thoughts. So first it was just like a slight dislike. Now everything that the person does starts to bother you. And now you start to see problems in the person even where there isn't a problem. And so things just start to grow. Things just start mm -hmm. to become, you know, bigger and that becomes a problem because now that person is your partner in some sort of um, area of work at the center. So you're going to start not understand each other anymore and your willingness to work with the person, your willingness to listen, to yield from times to times, is not going to be there anymore. It's a small thing. It can be happening in the kitchen of the spiritual center. You know what I mean? But it mm -hmm. starts like really small. So we need to look. Are we being aggressive? How are we talking? Are we and carrying resentment within ourselves? Go ahead. And, and and as you said, aggressive, it reminds me of what we call passive aggressiveness. Because mm -hmm. many people, I recall situations that people asked us in, that happen in spirit centers, for example. Let's say the, the coordinator of a meeting or the president of the center proposes something and somebody uh -huh. doesn't agree. They may not say anything, <laughs> but they may talk to others, you know. Um, right you know, on the behind the scenes saying, oh, I don't agree with that. Why do we have to do this? I don't like it, right. blah, blah, blah. This is what we call passive aggression. And people mm -hmm. think they are not doing anything, but actually they are. Plus, right. Susana, uh, there is another situation uh, that somebody was sharing with us, knowing that the Kardec Radio was going to discuss this program, this in the program, which is the scenario, for example, let's say we we have uh, – a meeting amongst the spirit centers. And let's say somebody raises, you know, a comment about another organization in another country, uh, bad mouthing coordinators elsewhere, etc. Wouldn't that characterize that this person is certainly not in harmony and very likely by bad mouthing people, especially open wide in a spiritist meeting, would more certainly characterize the level of obsession of what we call fascination, in which people 
has his or her judgment totally paralyzed by creating such discord? What do you think about it? Um, I think the bad mouthing uh, goes back precisely to the uh, passage of the gospel that we spoke um, earlier in the program, right? I mean, why are people uh, doing that? I don't know if this alone characterizes a process of uh, fascination per se, but I think that these are good behaviors for us to observe. How are we using our words? How are we talking? What kind of feelings are we putting um, out there? And when the fascination process is fascinating in itself, and it's very hard for us to truly detect, but in the medium's book, Kardec also sets up some guidelines to help us. So when people become very isolated, groups mm-hmm. become very isolated, individuals become very isolated, they don't mm-hmm. open any possibility, any windows for anything different, not even to the possibility of listening. They move away from any person who thinks or has any idea different than theirs. Mm-hmm. They protect themselves. Um, and they become very stiff around their own ideas. I mean, a lot of times that is a a, a true setup for a process of uh, fascination. So what Mm -hmm. Kardec, uh, in the Medium's book as well, at the very end of the Medium's book, he's going to encourage the societies to exchange ideas, to visit one another, to be able precisely not to be in isolation. Same thing with groups and same thing with people. So if someone within a group is very isolated and very stiff around one idea and, you know, the person's idea starts to get into the the work of the group, um, then yes, I mean, there is is a possibility, something that we need to... um, to be attentive. So, you know, going back to your initial question, I would say, you know, um, aggressive attitudes, resentment, um, rage. Um, we, we, I, I was, I was raised in a way that, um, you know, uh, I was told that, you know, anger was not a very Christian feeling. <laughs> and <laughs> so, for the longest time, I was never angry. Thank God nowadays, I it's okay for me to be angry. And I think what's important for us to understand is in our uh, uh, moment of evolution, we're not going to avoid these uh, feelings. We are going to have them. Um, mm-hmm. If someone disagrees with us, our tendency is not to like that person as much anymore. As Kardec says, we are morbidly sensitive people, so we are going to have um, envy, uh, we are going to be competitive, we're going to have resentment. The thing is, we need to be able to be mindful of what's happening within us and be able to process and understand where those feelings come from. And, um, you know, but the first step is to be able to acknowledge, is to be able to observe and and to recognize what's happening uh, within us. I when I when I speak about this, um, a lot of times I say to um, in my lectures, you know, if you're having a conversation with someone and the person's criticizing you or saying something different than what you think, if your heart rate goes up a little bit, if you feel a little tightness within your chest, there is a sign right there. The um, Um, proportion of the uh, increasing heart rate and the proportion of the stiffness speak to your difficulty in listening and dealing with an idea that's different than yours. So just pay attention. (laughs) Those are easy signs for us to recognize. I mean, they become, they are so strong that they actually become physiologically um, apparent and you can actually detect when you're having a very difficult time listening to um, something that goes against your your interests or your beliefs. Mm-hmm. Susanna, it's a wonderful discussion, and we're going to give a short break, but when we come back, we have a question from a listener named Chris. 
employees uh-huh. at uh, Blog Talk Radio Chat Room here. Before we go to the break, we'd like to mention to the listener how funny things are in, in a way. Remember Divaldo Franco. Uh, Chico Xavier was a renowned medium already. Divaldo was still, you know, they were 20 years apart age-wise. And Divaldo was growing in a different way. He was like a speaker instead of being a writing medium and everything else that Chico Xavier was presenting. And I remember many people trying to, you know, put Divaldo down because they didn't agree with uh, Uh, the way he was uh, giving lectures, which was very different from the majority of people at the time and many other things. And they did, I know people who did their very best to neutralize him, to put him down, creating scandal, etc. And here we are. Divaldo Franco at 86 years of age, being the, the role model nowadays for us, of what it is not to listen to people's comments, and even those who think they have the power because they are temporarily in, uh, you know, we would say, quote-unquote, in power positions in the movement, and they think they are the ones who are going to decide what's going to happen to people's lives. And here we have many of them. We have never heard who they are, but we know who Divaldo Franco is. It's an example for us on how to come across the force of obsession and not to let it break us apart. After the break, Susana Simon is going to listen a question from Chris and answer and discuss how to prevent and how to remedy obsession in the spiritist movement after the break. We will return to our program after these messages. Want to learn more about the ins and outs of mediumship? The book In the Realms of Mediumship by the Spirit Dr. Andre Luiz through the medium Chico Xavier analyzes the various aspects of mediumistic communication and mediumship. He also praises the efforts of mediums who are faithful to the spiritual mandate they received before they reincarnated, warning them about the risks of badly practiced exchanges between the two worlds. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.of.america.com. The Spiritist Magazine is a trimestral digital periodical that publishes the latest news on the Spiritist thought and the movement in the USA and worldwide at www.spiritistmagazine.com. Spread the word. Kardec Radio. To learn more about Spiritism. Study Spiritism online at eSpiritism. eSpiritism is an online tool to promote the study and practice of Spiritism while contributing to the preparation of Spiritist practitioners. For full access to courses, go to www.e-spiritism.org. If you missed out on any previous shows, no worries. We have an on-demand section of all previous shows and interviews. Go to our website at www.cardacradio.com. Emmanuel's Novels The reputable mentor, Emmanuel, wrote a five-book series of spiritist novels that can truly transform your life. Starting with 2,000 Years Ago, Emmanuel delights our minds with the true account of characters that are so similar to each of us. Discover yourself in Emmanuel's novels and live better. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.com. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are here talking about obsession in the spiritist movement. It's not simple, but Susanna Simões is making it ever more understandable. 
Susana. Before the break, we mentioned that there is a listener, Chris. Thank you, Chris, for uh, writing your question to Susana. There is a question here. Do individuals with self-centered personalities attract certain negative spirits? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if they attract a specific um, type of um, spirit per se. Um, but self-centeredness has, um, is definitely, I think, um, an issue for, for our society, for all of us. Um, in fact, it's very interesting that um, this question has been asked because another um, uh, question in the Spirits book that I like particularly when talking about this uh, issue is a question that speaks about the issue of self-interest. So uh, the spirits tell Kardec that true uh, disinterestedness is absolutely rare in our uh, world. So we are driven by self-interest. We are very self-centered uh, people. And so, of course, that this uh, self-centeredness um, is one of the, the gaps that can be open to attract spirits. The spirits will feed that. So when we are talking about the, um, you know, what to do to prevent those things, um, the, uh, Augusto Cury, um, a, a Brazilian mm -hmm. author that has studied Christ intelligence from uh, a non-religious uh, perspective per se, he um, he says something very interesting in, in one of the chapters uh, of his book. He talks about um, the idea that in a relationship, for relationships to um, to be winners, to 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 go in the right direction, people need to be willing to lose from time to time. Now I ask you, who likes to lose? No one likes to lose. We are, um, we are wired to win. We are wired to have things gone our way according to our interests. Um, the issue of the interest is such an interesting uh, issue because the spirits also say that we develop certain virtues. There's no question about it. So we, are, we think that we have mastered a certain virtue. All that it takes sometimes is one small poking into our self-interest and our true character will be revealed. So that's in the, in the Spirit's book. So the issue of self-centeredness, of ego, of, you know, uh, self-interest is a very strong issue in our society. It's not because we are bad or because, you know, it's our evil nature. No, it's because we're in the very beginning of our evolution. We are very instinctive beings that feel, and the goal is precisely to, um, to move from this place of being so self-centered to be able to work more collectively. So we move from competing to cooperating. Um, and so I think it's a problem in the sense that um, especially when you work in the spiritual center and work in the spiritual movement where you're unable to lose from time to time, you, you, need to, you need to be able to say, okay, I think this is the way that things should be done. But you know what? Let me give you a chance and see if something else works. Because at this point, I'm bringing more confusion to the center, to the movement than I am assisting. And what we need to be able to do is to put the goals of the movement above our own goals. We need to leave this place of self-centeredness and think, okay, it's not only what I want or what I think is the best, but at this moment, what is the best for this group of people? At this moment, what is the best behavior, the best attitude that I can help to keep the harmony of the group? And so... Mm -hmm. These are small exercises that we can do in our um, uh, spiritual center, in our spiritual labs of, you know, think of our relationships, our marriages. If we don't lose from time to time, we won't be there, right? 
So mm -hmm. the relationships in the spiritual center have to be the same way. People have to not be so self-centered because once you are in that place of self-centeredness and you're not willing to lose from time to time or put the goals of the group above your own groups, yes, you become a huge window and the spirits are going to really tell you, no, you were right, you were the best, you know, don't give up, you know, keep fighting for your ideas. And a lot of times you will become, um, you know, a problem and an instrument for disharmony in the center, in the movement. Exactly. And Susanna, as you're mentioning this, it reminds us the fact that, uh, you're already giving some tips about prevention and also mm -hmm. of how to remedy. Uh, one thought that comes to mind is, a, is a, a common saying in which the center doesn't need us, but we need the center. People often forget. I remember somebody telling me many years ago, uh, you know why I don't go to spirit centers? Because... There are always issues here and there, and I, I, I prefer to study spiritism in my house. And then what happened? Years passed by. Four years later, this person is diagnosed with cancer and comes back to the center and says, oh, you know, now I realize I need it, etc. So the person was mistaken that the center needed her instead of thinking that she needed it for her own nourishment. It's my own movement of nourishment, of uh, self-instruction, of realizing about what to do in my life, etc. And that's where we get the greatest mistake. And, and about self-centeredness, uh, Susanna, um, I recall uh, an American friend in a spiritist center when we read Kardec's comment about the fact that we needed to to be totally absent of self-interest. He said, it's impossible, Vanessa. Human nature yeah. has some form of interest. And he's right, but I think what Kardec meant was that interest that becomes selfish. If I have the interest of helping others because I also feel good about myself, that's self-love. That's not sure. selfishness, right? Mm -hmm. It's, yes, it's totally mm -hmm. So, Susanna, let's break down if we possible. I know it's very extensive, but a few tips on how to prevent obsession from actually taking place in the spiritist movement, being it in a spiritist center or in a larger federation. How can we actually prevent it? Uh -huh. um, there, there, there are a couple of things um, that we can definitely do. One is um, encourage people to... Um, Continue to go to the centers. That's the first thing, like you said, you know, um, we need the center. We need the center for the nourishment. And even the the small problems are, you know, incredible tools for us to put in practice the things that we are uh, learning. And so they are tools for our spiritual growth. I mean, we're not going to be able to do this alone, so we should pray. We need to, um, especially at all moments, but especially when we are, in a more vulnerable place, um, mindful of some negative thoughts and feelings, uh, pray and ask for help. We need to recognize that we need this type of assistance, and that also helps changing our frequency and our vibration. I think that the exercise of mindfulness that I have mentioned before, in other words, um, we are constantly thinking. We are constantly having ideas and feelings uh, from time to time, it's important to be mindful of what we are feeling. We are not in a stage of evolution where we are not going to have negative feelings. It's okay to have negative feelings. Feelings are warning signs. We need to have them. They tell us that there is something that needs to be attended, that there is a part of, love, of us that is in need of love. But we can only heal and we can only attend to ourselves if we first are mindful of what we are feeling. Follow the advice of knowing thyself, which is basically goes along with mindfulness and committing ourselves over and over to this work of uh, self-improvement. I think that one of the greatest things that spiritism does, it gives us ownership 
and um, help us to take responsibility for our own states of happiness or unhappiness. So there's absolutely no one to blame for our miserability or for our feelings. Our feelings are ours. It's not what people are doing to us that's causing our states of disharmony. It's how we are reacting to people that is really uh, establishing, um, you know, our inner environment. And there are two more things that I would like to speak to, mm-hmm. which is um, I think it speaks to your initial comment about what you felt when you were down here with us in Miami um, at the event of March. We have uh, heavily invested in the last years uh, here in Florida at the federation level and within the Conscious Living um, Spiritist Group in creating a very strong sense of friendship among people because when you are friends and true friendship true love among the workers you become more prone to forgive Uh, when disagreements happen when you know um, things happen if you love that person and if you love the work then you will be more likely to forgive and to think that the person and the work are worth your effort to seek reconciliation. When we don't care too much about people, it's easier to walk away. So we have heavily invested in this sense of fraternity, brotherhood, friendship, and encourage what I um, call... um, emotional honesty in our relationships. So I'm going to go back to what you were referring to um, when you said that people, you know, you have a meeting in your group and someone disagrees with something and that person out of the meeting and starts talking on the back. Mm -hmm. Well, Mm -hmm. that person is um, taking away uh, any possibility of resolution of the problem. And so Emotional honesty is your ability to sit with someone that you love and that you are friends with and say, look, I am disagreeing with this. And it's nothing that you have done or nothing that you have said, but let me speak about my feelings. Let's speak about how I feel in face of this disagreement or this problem or this difference that you have. So, when, when we speak this way, we're not accusing the other person of doing anything to us. We're solely speaking about our own feelings. We're owning our perception of the situation, which is by no means the truth, but it's our perception. So we encourage in the center and here in the Federation, it's a little hard. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of different groups. But we have created recently a director's meeting in addition to our General Assembly, precisely to give people space to come together and to talk in a more intimate way about their ideas and their perception of how things are are going, so that um, in speaking this way, in creating this um, space for an emotional and honesty, honest talk, things can be solved more openly and in a more loving way, uh, preventing Uh, this type of um, vicious cycle that's so negative and is so destructive to any movement, to any center, um, when people are unable and don't have the courage or the comfort level to sit with one another and to speak without accusation, without pointing figures, but but speaking about your own self of how you feel. We, We need to be able to do that in order to better solve our problems. I think that communication is one key issue that is missing in the centers, a lot of times misses in the movement. I think everybody has the best intentions. If we would communicate a little bit more with one another, sharing our ideas, sharing our projects, and seeking to cooperate and to do things together, things would be um, moving a little bit more smoothly. Exactly. And Susanna, we'll never forget that our governor of the planet, our role model is Jesus. And he is 
the role model of humility, of humble, being humble. And uh, one thing that I observe as being critical in the movement is when people turn into owners of ideas and they say, oh, this is my idea. And as you said, when people are against it or they don't understand, then it creates, you know, some sort of uh, friction. And uh, Jesus, who is our governor and came here in person, he never turned anything his ideas. He said everything comes from God. And that's how everything becomes easier. Because none of our projects are ours. None of our plans in Spirit Centers is ours. And as we know, through several understandings of Andrea Lewis in the series of Chico Xavier's mediumistic books, we're going to learn that um, every center was created even before, way before we even reincarnated. We were recruited to redeem ourselves through the work. So none of the plans of any center, of any federation is ours. So we can never turn it into a personal issue, an egotistic, self-centered issue. So in that regard, Susanna, we can prevent many things, as you said. Now, the difficult time comes when we have to remedy it. What would be the therapeutic steps to heal uh, either a spiritist center or a spiritist uh, movement in the larger extent when we see that there are some nuclei of obsession. What can we do to heal it? I think one of the first steps is, um, you know, when, when, um, when um, Chico Xavier was um, accused of... Um, you know, using um, the, the money from the books. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and Givaldo has been also accused, like you said, of many different things. I think we need to talk a little less. I mean, both of them have um, taught us that we need to not uh, retribute, not to respond to negative things, to accusations. A lot of times I feel like... Um, we end up as a movement nurturing the negative things. Um, I think that one thing that we should do is to continue to do our work. Um, we need to continue. You don't, you're not going to uh, fight uh, the bad with accusations uh, or, you know, speaking about the negatives. I think, and, and, and this is something that we try to do here too, Vanessa, is um, the ways that we need to um, improve things in by in, is by investing on the light. So we can always pray and ask for the guidance of the good spirits. We can never forget that God is in charge, the spirits are in charge, that sooner or later things are going to go the right direction. Uh, it may take a little longer because we're making things a little harder, but there is no doubt. So none of us is here to save the spiritual movement. Um, but I think that we can make a contribution. And the best contribution that we can do is instead of uh, using our energy and our voice and our feelings to attack, to criticize, we need to focus on the work that we are doing. And we need to invest on goodness. We need to continue to, you know, uh, translate books here in America. We need to continue to strengthen our centers, and by doing that, I think we are going to um, to to raise the frequency of the movement. I think that um, goodness is contagious. I think that we're going to be able to reach out to people and to help people in different ways. So, you know, it's like okay, this group is going wrong. Let's go save them. I don't know if we can save anyone, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I think that we can, again, continue to do what we are doing the best possible, always, always seeking uh, and choosing love and goodness and mercifulness and compassion and understanding and, and, and working on those things to bring enlightenment to everyone, to make it available so people can benefit from it whenever mm-hmm. they are open and ready to benefit. You're so right. And uh, there is one thing, Susanna, as we know, obsession can come from uh, discarnate spirits. And we know that 
Many of them don't want the Spiritist movement to progress because it's the work of goodness and it's going to really free many people's minds. Spiritism has this uh, role of freeing our minds of our ignorance, thus freeing from their own subjugation towards us. We can also use these obsession meetings to talk to these spirits and help them see things in a different way, right? Sure, yes. This is definitely uh, one of the works that we, um, the spiritist um, centers, do offer the work of uh, this obsession, where, like you said, um, you have the mediums and you have the, um, let's call them therapists, who will be um, speaking to the spirits and um and you can clarify them and trying to explain to them that that choice of behavior in life ultimately brings them more unhappiness uh, than not. And so mm-hmm. I think that's a very uh, powerful tool that the spiritual center have, no doubt. But as I tell the people who seek the spiritual center, and you probably know, I know you know that so many people come to the spiritual center uh, seeking um, this obsession. They want the spirits to be taken away and a lot of times um, you know uh, either for themselves or for somebody else and it can be a person, it can be a center, it can be a movement. But the most, most important thing is that each one of us continue to seek to educate ourselves. Education mm-hmm. around the gospel. It goes back to the gospel, you know. Uh, the mm-hmm. gospel has to be the gist of our studies, of our attention, of our passion, understanding and integrating the message of Jesus in our lives, that's always going to be the most powerful uh, medicine and the best prevention for any type of obsession. As we educate ourselves, we educate the spirit together with us, and we all benefit from it at the very end. That's very true. And for those who are listening to us and are not spiritists like Chris, I see from your question, Chris, when we talk about Jesus, we are talking about the Christ consciousness. And by the way, Chris, you have a question here. Does Kardec movement have any connection with theosophy or anthroposophy? And what are the odds and what are the disagreements? We actually don't have time to discuss this today, Chris, but we are going to dedicate a program to discuss this. Just wait and see. And thank you so much for your comment and uh, forgive us for not having time to address it. By the way, Sandra Benetti from uh, also Florida. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, Big hug to you. We miss you. Well said, she says. Criticisms are welcome provided they are made without hatred and said it in a loving way. By the way, Sandra, you're right. Criticisms are welcome when people who are criticized are the ones, the first ones to roll their sleeves and help to do better. As Arodo Dutradia said, it criticize if you're not doing anything. But if you want to do something, you actually have little time to criticize because you're busy doing <laughs> something that is very, very important. We actually don't have time to criticize when we're working hard. So, Zanda, what would be your final comments today regarding the very topic? What would you like to share with the listener at Kardec Radio? Well, I would like to end this very um, difficult and uh, sensitive topic with a positive note. Um, I just want to say that I see the movement, um, believe it or not, with hope. I think that um, what we have been able to experience here in Florida, and by this I in no way, shape, or form mean that it's perfect that we don't have problems, that we don't have disagreements and obsession and all of those things. But I think that there, uh, the spirits movement in the United States is made of incredible, talented persons, and all of them with great willingness to serve to the cause and serve to the master. And I have really um, incredible hope that we're going to continue to move in the right direction, that people are going to come together more, that we will be able to cooperate, that we're going to be able to talk more. And 
coordinate the movement. I think that um, one of the roles for the federations, for the United States Spirits Council, um, we have a number of other federations being created these days in the United States, is to be these organs that are going to facilitate the communication. We need to be able to talk more to one another, to find out what each person is doing, and to coordinate so that the movement becomes more um, coordinated and if, efficacious and things can be, um, be more productive as well. But I, I see with hope and I, I you know, keep my, my hope. I'm a positive person. I believe in, in, in humanity and there is nothing not to believe. We know that we are moving forward. We know that the good spirits are next to us, helping us. So it's a matter of like keep focusing on the good and opening our minds and hearts to listen to their message and do our best to integrate the teachings. And, um, you know, so that one day when we go back to the spiritual realm and we enter the spiritual realm, they can stamp on our passport success. Finally, after so many incarnations of uh, failing in the dissemination of uh, Christ's message to different uh, religions, we were able to make it this time. So that's my hope, Vanessa. I think Mm -hmm. we're going to get there. That's wonderful. And we make, Susanna, our words in regard to the movement everywhere else in the United States because we have listeners throughout many different countries across the world, in Canada, England, Australia, and Brazil, and Colombia, more than 61 countries listening to us. So wherever we are, we also have high hopes that things are going well and are improving as we speak because the law of progress is a law of God. We are destined to progress, not only as an individual, but as a collective being. And as Susanna said, we can only have hope. And if you are not engaged in any specific position in your center or in an organization, federation, don't worry. You are always of help. Remember, Chico Xavier never participated as in any position, in any federation, anything. And he changed the world by being the best he could be as a loving and kind person. So that's what we are expected to do, to follow the Christ consciousness, as Susanna said before. That can be preventative. That can also be therapeutic for us. We can always begin anew and renew ourselves. Susanna, we thank you again and again for your time, for sharing the teachings, and for the work you have been doing in Florida. Thank you so much, Susanna. Many blessings to you. Thank you. you. So, dear listener, we're going to wrap up the program with a prayer, but we're not going to make this prayer because the prayer of service by Emmanuel really is the one that tells us how to follow through the teachings of Spiritism and never, ever fall into any trap of obsession. Prayer of service. After we finish this prayer... We say goodbye to you for today. Remind yourself that tomorrow we have Spiritist Awareness uh, at 8 p.m. And on Wednesday, Mackenzie Mello from Boston and Francisca Kranz, who is back to her country in Germany. They are leading us in the discussions and the reading of the book No Solar by Andrea Lewis through Chico Xavier. And on Thursdays, Daniel Santos through Spiritist Network is streaming beautiful Spiritist Talks by many wonderful speakers we have throughout the world. For now, we wish you lots of blessings next week. Ona Graham, a great fan of ours from Atlanta, Georgia, is going to be here to talk about Andre Louis' books and her take as a psychologist and as a spiritist. Right now, we wish you lots of blessings and let us serve. Love and serve always. Prayer of Service Lord, teach us to walk the enlightening path of service. Give us the strength to destroy the heavy fortress of our wrongdoings, the courage to pave the way to freedom from ourselves.
and the means to unlock our hearts in favor of our neighbors, surrendering to them at last the treasures of love with which you entrusted us. Wherever we walk, may pain become less hurtful, ignorance less aggressive, hatred less cruel, darkness less dense, lethargy less shadowing, intolerance less destructive. If we do not yet possess the positive qualities to enrich our terrestrial journey, help us to mitigate the injustices that surround us. May we in your name distribute fraternity and renewal and use with happiness the sublime and invisible gifts of silence comprehension and renunciation. Lord, who taught us without words the supreme lessons of simplicity in the cradle and of sacrifice in the cross, leading us towards spiritual development and divine resurrection, guide our uncertain walk and help our sanctified propositions so that your will, merciful and just, be unto us, with us, and for us, today and forever, wherever we may be. So be it. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio. Broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www.cardecradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.